Today is Friday, June 14th, 2019, Friday of the 10th week in Ordinary Time. Now that we're back into Ordinary Time and we're just counting our way through the year, it's good to remember still that Fridays are Fridays. We have to act like it's a Friday. I do know that there's a lot of confusion out there amongst Catholics. Catholics just think that Fridays became another day of the week with that whole decree that was made by the U.S. bishops years ago. But no, it's not the case. As I've said many a time, this is a day that is penitential. And today is Friday. There's really nobody around. So again, we're going to take care of wasabi. Good morning. Good morning. In a sleepy mood. All right, so Father Benedict is getting the food ready. Little Wasabi here is waking up. He's starting to become explorative as soon as he gets out of his little cocoon. Is somebody hungry? Yeah. Food, food, food. Come. Come. I'll tell you this much, Wasabi's one of the more popular birds around. He gets lots and lots of visitors here. Lots. So is he going to have a problem on the perch or getting on a perch? No, he's perching just fine. Oh, good. So he said to get different types of perches. Mm -hmm. Don't have the same ones throughout the area. The baby of the uh, Mrs. Okay. Sacrament oh, church. No, I saw, I saw the baby before. Yeah. yeah. I saw you before. Yeah, that's a uh, Wasabi yes. chippy. So why are Fridays penitential? Let's go back to the basic and fundamental thing I keep saying. I'm a sinner. Because we know that on Friday, Jesus Christ, he died on cross, especially at three o'clock. And so as a sinner, of course, I have to work on changing myself. I have to work with the grace of God. But I've also got to take specific actions so that I can overcome my sinfulness. I think it is very important that we as Catholics continually acknowledge not only that we're sinners, but that our lives necessarily need to be different. I think penitential practices could be considered a form of prayer. And I think for those who do them well, their spirituality will only deepen and grow. Yes, every Catholic needs to have a daily spiritual life, daily. Spending more time for uh, prayer because that will make them uh, to be one with Uh, or maybe to be one with the passion and the suffering of Jesus Christ. And yes, prayer does take on many different forms, different ways for us to grow in holiness, to grow in relation to God. I think a great many of our people forget that prayer is an essential component of existence. Absolutely not negotiable. I once asked a priest who is helping out here during the summer. He's now actually a bishop back in India. I said to him, what is the object of prayer? And he said, union with God. The ultimate expression of prayer is communion. All the spiritual masters agree. If you're going to pray, one of the things that you're praying to do or to achieve is to be in union with God. Allowing our will to be matched to his will. Our lives to be conformed to his desires. And of course, there are many different ways to pray, but all should have the same goal when they pray. And that is to draw ever closer to God. Basically, when we're talking about communion, the communion of persons in the Holy Trinity, the communion of persons like in a husband and wife, the communion of persons is the ultimate form of love. And so when Jesus says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, that's what prayer is all about. Being in complete union with God, being in God, for God, to God, about God in all things. Now, I know there are people out there who basically believe that no matter what they do, it's a form of prayer. That's not the case. Real prayer is sitting and putting that attention towards something holy, something divine. I know there's a lot of people out there who say, oh, I don't really have time for prayer. Prayer can happen pretty much anytime, anywhere. But ultimately, if someone is going to be faithful to their Catholic roots, some of that prayer time has to take place in a church has to be before the Blessed Sacrament. Yes, so go ahead and pray in your car, pray in your living room, pray in your bedroom, pray while you're walking, pray while you're with others, pray. 
But at some point, try to stop in a church to pray. God's real presence in the Blessed Sacrament changes prayer. Trust me, I know. Now, I will admit, for many, many years now, probably 30 plus, I've always lived someplace where it's very easy to get into a church and be before the Blessed Sacrament, living in seminaries, living in parishes. It's not much of a commute for me to get there. So I admit, I have it a little bit easier. But even I still have to put that concerted effort of spending some time in the church and saying my prayers. That will help them to have a... Uh, better life uh, or that will give them the real meaning of imitating Jesus Christ in his life and action. And for those who can, I think a very important part of Catholic spirituality is the Holy Mass of receiving Holy Communion, of being prepared to receive Holy Communion. And those who can go on a daily basis ought to do so. And in fact, as I prepare now to say Holy Mass for today, I'll keep you and your intentions in my prayer. 